Hello, and welcome to the next lesson. I'm super excited to be here with you. Very soon, we're going to get into the good stuff and talk about actually connecting things to the Arduino to do useful stuff. So, we'll need to know about certain functions the Arduino uses to take data in from various sensors and also control or output commands to those sensors. Some of the I.O. or input-output related functions we're going to learn about are digital write and analog write. We'll need to know about these functions and others going forward in the course. But first, we should have an understanding of what it means if something is digital or analog. What's the difference between digital and analog? Now, I know some of you may already know this, but I still urge you to go through this lesson anyway for a review. For those who don't quite know the answer, this lesson is a must. Now, let's talk about digital versus analog. So, there's different ways to classify electrical circuits. And one very important way is to classify a circuit or system as either analog or digital. Let's start by defining a couple often misunderstood terms. A continuous time signal is one that is specified for every infinitesimal. And by infinitesimal, we mean like really, really small value of time within a certain time period. So, if we zoom in really close to the signal at the top, it'll still take on some value. A discrete time signal, on the other hand, is specified only at discrete time values or steps along a timeline. So, the things that look like little lollipops in the bottom part of the picture are samples taken at specific times with some value. The signal takes on no value between the lollipops. An analog signal is one whose amplitude can take on any value in a continuous range. This is like the signal near the top. A digital signal's amplitude can only take on a finite number of values. We'll see one of those in a second. Okay, so all that may sound confusing. Let's clear this up. In this picture, the horizontal axis labeled T is time, and the vertical axis with the letter G and a T in parentheses is the amplitude of the signal. Now, this may sound kind of weird, but don't let it confuse you. Figure A in the picture here shows an analog signal, or actually part of one, that's also continuous in time, while part C also depicts an analog signal, but now it's in discrete time. And again, we can see the little sucker sticks. The signal itself varies continuously over the time period. And remember, time is a t-axis on the graphs here, but we're only sampling it at discrete points in time. So if you were to grab a pencil or something and connect the dots, you'd get a continuous analog signal that looks like the one in part A. A practical example of this would be logging the temperature every 10 minutes. The temperature itself varies continuously over time. So in other words, the temperature doesn't jump from 75 to 76 in zero amount of time. And nor is there a time when the temperature is non-existent. Even if it's zero or below, we still have a temperature. Rather, it takes on some value in between at every infinitesimally small time period. In this case, our only interest is looking at it every 10 minutes. So if we were to plot the temperature, which is an analog value, it might look like part C. In part B, we see a continuous time digital signal, and part D shows a discrete time digital signal. So if you connect the dots at part D using only lines that are like horizontal or vertical to the t-axis, something like B may appear. Now part B resembles something you may see on an oscilloscope when probing a digital circuit. But what about part D? Well, if we log the value of a certain stock, say, at the close of every business day, we may have a graph that looks like part D. So let's talk about analog first. For our intent, we'll say that in an analog system, either the voltage or current will vary continuously over some time period. An analog of something is a copy of that something. So put another way, it's analogous. That's where the term analog actually comes from. Take the microphone, for example. Sound waves are waves of air pressure. The microphone turns those pressure waves into a fluctuating voltage or an electrical analog of the pressure waves. The signal is then fed into an amplifier and then a speaker where the electrical signal is converted back to the pressure wave or sound, only it's louder. Now, unless you're trapped in the matrix, you live in an analog world. And most things in nature that one can measure appear in analog form. The AC power in your home is analog. Other analog quantities are distance, time, and temperature. And when you listen to an AM FM radio, you're listening to information broadcast in an analog form. And speaking of radio, one of the problems with analog systems 
is the introduction of noise. We've all tuned in a radio station before and heard noise or static. Now, FM radio is a lot more immune to noise than AM, but it still happens. If you're old enough, you may remember copying VHS tapes and noticing that the quality of the copy was not as good as the original. This is due to noise. Let's talk digital. Now, for most of us, the digital signals we'll be working with will resemble part B of this figure. One of the earliest digital electronic systems went live in 1844, believe it or not. Invented by Samuel Morse, the first telegraph was sent that year. And that's what Morse code is named after, by the way. This instrument used short and long pulses of current called dots and dashes. At any instant, the key of the transmitting telegraph is in one of two states. It's either on or off. The information that a telegraph message carries depends only on the on-off state of the transmitter as time passes. Two different levels identify the signal at any time, and this is what makes it digital. Now, of course, no one uses a telegraph in this day and age, but most of us use computers, smartphones, and a myriad of other digital or partly digital devices every day. 